Hey there Titans and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be talking about how to deal with repeat data or multiple records from Salesforce. Let's get started. Today we'll be talking about repeat strips, repeat columns, and repeat containers. One way that we can read multiple records from Salesforce is with a table. Today we will not be talking about tables. We will address that in a different video. Let's get started. Now imagine I wanted to bring back into my project to read multiple records from Salesforce. For example, multiple contacts under an account. Now, this is the example I'll be using today, but keep in mind we can do this with any object from Salesforce. Doesn't matter if it's a standard or custom object, we can display it in Titan. So let me take a look and we'll add here a lookup field just to find our account that we want to start with. And we'll have a separate video uh, showing how to use lookup fields. But right here, I'm just going to query different accounts. And I'll go ahead and have a button to trigger my get to bring um, contacts. All right. Now, I'll show you what this looks like if we try to do this without setting up a repeat strip or a repeat column or a repeat container. Let's call this full name. We'll put this in a normal strip. I'm going to run a get, and I'll bring in contact. Now, I want to bring in multiple. I want to make sure that I say up to, let's say in my case, I'll only say a max of 20 records at a time. And I'm going to have this triggered on a user action. My condition is simple. I just want to bring in all of the accounts whose account ID, or all of the contacts whose account ID matches the account ID from my lookup field and I will map the full name of those contacts to my full name field. All right. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is query an account. I'll use one that I know has some contacts and I'll bring back the contact. Oh, I forgot to add my get to my button. Let's do that really quickly. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna bring in here my account. And now when I run this get, you'll notice that this is how my contacts are displayed, which is not ideal. So how can we make this look a little bit better? So the first thing I'm gonna show you is a repeat strip. I'll go ahead and click on my strip and I'll click on the repeat tick mark right over here. And what this will do is that it will bring that repeat data or multiple records in a much better way that we can display to our end user. And so as you can see here, the data has repeated. And basically this strip, strip with the full name has duplicated itself based on the amount of contacts that were returned or the amount of records that will be returned to your strip. All right. Let's now see how we can display this in a slightly different way. I'm going to change this to a repeat column instead of a repeat strip. And you can toggle between your strip and your column by either clicking on these icons or I can always look on the layer list and either go to my strip or my column. In this case, I'll come to my column and I will make this a repeat column. Let's make our column small so that it can repeat a number of times on the same line. And now if I run the same get, Notice that my data is repeating horizontally instead of vertically. All right, let's take a look at one more way that we can look at repeat data. Let's go ahead and add a auto fit container. And you know what, first I'm going to show you kind of the use case of why you would want to use something like this. Imagine you had a stepper and you wanted to show repeat data within a container like a stepper. In that case, you would use an auto fit container, a repeat auto fit container that is. And this will work exactly like a repeat strip or a repeat column. 
I can add my input field here. Let's call this one full name in container. And I can display this data horizontally or vertically depending on how I want. And I can choose these icons right here to do so, just like a repeat strip or a repeat column. Okay. Let's actually make it a bit bigger so that we can see the different contacts that come back. And we need to map this in our get. So let's head over to our get. And in the mapping, we'll find the full name container. And notice this one is in a repeat column. This one is in a repeat auto fit container. And I'll add the full name. Excellent. So now, when I query my account, and I bring in all my contacts, you'll notice now the data is repeating within this container, within my stepper, and I don't need to use a separate strip to do this. All right. Now, the next thing I want to show you is using variables when we run our um, get. And all of our repeat strips, columns, containers, they all have, um, and let's actually demonstrate this with a repeat strip, but again, it's gonna be the same if you're doing this with a repeat column, a repeat strip, or a repeat container. I'll get rid of this strip for now, and let's make our column bigger. And I'm gonna click on the settings here. I'll make sure I'm on my strip, and I'll check out the custom variables that I have here once I tick off this repeat check mark, check mark um, box. So here I can add variables that are for this repeat strip that will repeat along with my strip. So for example, I can add, let's say, the contact ID. And best practice would be to bring back an en encrypted ID here. But just to show you for the example, uh, we'll bring back the contact ID for each strip. Um, and just to show, we could also bring back um, other data that the end user doesn't need to see that can exist behind the scenes. Now keep in mind, uh, we also have the option for numeric, string, and JS variables, as well as system variables. Today we'll just focus on the static variables for our repeat strip. I'll head over to Salesforce. I'll have head over to my get. And now, not only will I map the full name, I'll also map the um, record ID to my contact ID here. So let's do contact ID to contact ID. And I can also see that I have my variable for email here. Okay, I'll go ahead and click apply. And I'm gonna turn on our debug mode so that we can see these variables behind the scenes. Preview. And let's bring in some contacts. All right, so I can see my contact full name here. But behind the scenes for each strip, I can also see row one, contact ID, this contact, and this email. Row two, contact ID, and email. And so for each index or each row that is returned for our repeat strip, I can also populate variables that are specific to that index. All right. The final thing I want to show is pushing data back to Salesforce using a repeat strip. And again, this is the same for repeat strip, for repeat column, or for repeat container. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this field. And instead, I'm going to add a, and let's do this with a form element to follow the best practices here. We'll do, uh, let's do three columns and one row. And all I'm going to do here is add in a first name field, a last name field for my contact that I'm going to create. And I will also add a field, a button, excuse me, because at some point I might want to be able to delete my index here. So I'll just show how we can do that as well. 
Um, I'll get rid of these elements, they're no longer relevant for me. And I'll add here a button to add. Okay, this will add another strip. And finally, we'll add another button to push it all to Salesforce. Okay, excellent. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set up my buttons. So I have a button here to add the strip. I'm gonna go ahead and head over to Element Interactivity. I wanna to go to Strip Interactivity. And I wanna find my repeat strip. And I'm gonna go ahead and insert. And this is to add a new index for my strip. Okay, notice we have other options such as delete and reset. We'll focus on insert and delete today. Okay, and this will help me add additional contacts to my strips. And for delete, I'm also going to head over to element interactivity, strip interactivity, repeat strip, and delete. And then it'll ask me which index do I want to delete. In my case, I'm deleting the current index because that's where my button is sitting on the index itself. And so I want to delete the current index that I click the button from. We'll say delete strip. Excellent. And the last thing I'm going to do is set up my push. So I'll come from here and we'll set up a new push, Salesforce action, Salesforce integrations. We'll create a push to create contacts. We're just going to do create, although you can update as well. If you already have, um, you know, let's say you bring back multiple records from Salesforce in a get, and then you want to update them, you can do that as well. Today, we'll just focus on create. I'll go ahead and map first name to first name. All right, where do we have this? Yeah, first name and last name. Excellent, and notice we can see these are in our repeat strip, which is great. Create multiple contacts. Excellent. All right, looks like we're ready to go. So each time I add a strip, this will add a new index and so that I can create multiple contacts and send them to Salesforce. And each time I click on my delete, it will delete the specific index in which I click the button. So let's create a few contacts. Let's say uh, we'll do like three contacts. I'll say contact 1A. Contact two A two B. Let's do and let's do contact three B here three C and we'll do C C C and let's go ahead and now push this all to Salesforce. Now, if I head over to my integration logs, I can see that I've created three different contacts in Salesforce. So check them out. One, two, and three. And as we can see, I have contact 3C, contact 2B, 1A. So what we've learned today is how we can read or bring data from multiple records in Salesforce. We can do that using a repeat strip, a repeat column, and a repeat container. And we also just demonstrated how we can push multiple records back to Salesforce. Again, that can be done with a repeat strip, a repeat column, or a repeat container. All of them will do. And we also talked about how we can use variables um, for our repeat data so that we don't have to display all of that data to the end user, but we can also have some of those details behind the scenes, such as a record ID um, or any other details that you might not want your end user to be able to see. All right, good luck and enjoy working with repeat data from Salesforce.